Well, good morning. So good to see each of you. Uh, if you've been with us on Friday and then again yesterday, uh, I'm not going to even stand up here and pretend that you don't know what's about to go down. Um, if you haven't been with us, I hope that you've prepared yourself, prepared yourself to be moved, touched, inspired, encouraged, and edified through our praise this morning in worship in song. Our first song up here this morning is Let It Rise. It's been our theme for the entire weekend, and if you haven't been with us, you might be thinking, okay, well, let what rise? And rise where? Well, as we're about to sing, it's our praises, these songs, the glory of the Lord and the joy of our King, let these rise among us. The perfect song as a lead-in to all these other songs that we're going to sing as we truly let it rise this morning. But there is one verse, one verse I want to share with you before we start here. Uh, it's tucked away in the Old Testament book of Nehemiah, a book that we're studying on Wednesdays and and actually, we just covered and, and talked about chapter 12 and verse 43. Um, at this point, um, Nehemiah and the people have rebuilt these walls through great opposition. And, and there's been so much that's happened. They've rededicated their lives. It's time to dedicate this wall and celebrate this wall. And we can read in chapter 12 of Nehemiah, beginning in verse 42, the singer sang with Jezariah, their leader, and on that day, they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced because God had given them great joy. Even the women and children rejoiced so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard from afar. Now, I, I'm not sure I can comprehend or understand what that sounded like, especially from afar. Had to be loud, had to be encouraging, had to be edifying, but did you notice there what was actually heard from afar? It was their joy. Their joy that God had given them was heard from afar. So I hope that this morning we can put everything else that you could possibly have on your mind off to the side and let the joy that God has given each and every one of us, let it rise and let it also be heard from afar as we sing. No he the glory of the Lord the 
Let us go to God in prayer, if you would. Please bow with me. Our God and our Father in heaven, humbly as we bow in your presence at this time, it's always with praise and with thanksgiving of heart we do come before you. We acknowledge you as our God, the only true and living God that we know and serve. It is in you and through you that we live and we move and that we have our very existence in this life. We acknowledge you as the creator of the heavens and the earth and all that are therein. We see and we confirm your existence each day as we look into the heavens above. We see the sun, the moon, and the stars that rule over the day and the night. Father, we see all the beauties of thy creation as we surround ourselves. We see the flowers, the trees, we see the fields and the streams. As we quietly listen, Father, we hear the very sounds of nature itself. Father, all these things are evidence of your goodness, your greatness, and your almighty power. Father, we stand in awe when we truly consider how great thou art. Help us, Father, to always remember how small and how insufficient we are of ourselves. For this very reason, we need to trust in you with all of our hearts, to never rely on our own understanding but always allow you to direct our footsteps and our thoughts each and every day. Thank you, Father, for every blessing of life. You've been so good and so mercy to us as your children, Father. Father, you bless us with good health. You bless us with the opportunity to be here with those of like precious faith. We are grateful for every person here, represented here at this time, for the love of our hearts, that brings us together at times such as this to worship and to glorify you, Father. Dear Father, help us to always remember the significance of this very day, the first day of the week, when we can bring ourselves together as your children. We can lift up our voices in songs and praise to you. 
that we can lift up our voices in prayer to you, Father, that we can study, we can give of our means. We have the opportunity to come together around the Lord's table in remembrance of Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son, who lived a perfect life, Father, who went to the, suffered and died and shed his blood. He is now seated at the right hand of you, Father, where he intercedes for us. Father, we want to remember those who are sick this day, especially all those, Father, who are listed on our prayer wall. <laughs> Father, we realize that you are in control, that you know every name, you know every need. It is our prayer, Father, that you would bless these, that they might be returned to their most wanted health and life, Father. Father, we pray for those who are shut in, those who are lonely, those who are suffering. Father, it's our prayer that they'll never become discouraged in the conditions that they find themselves. But they, we will remember them in our prayers each and every day that they will be lifted up in the most holy faith, Father. Father, we also remember those, even those of our congregation, Father, who have lost loved ones. Father, we know that this is a very hard and difficult time in their lives. Father, we've all lost loved ones. When we lose a loved one, Father, we lose a part of our own life. We know that they're hurting, we know that they're grieving, Father. <laughs> Father, we just pray that we will surround them, that you will surround them and draw them close to you, Father. That you will put your loving arms around them and comfort them, Father, as only you can do. Pray, Father, that we will always be there to support them through the good and the hard times. Father, we're grateful for all of our preachers here. We've been blessed so richly. For all of our teachers who teach our young adults, our children, you've blessed us, Father, far beyond what we could ever expect. We're grateful for the leaders of this congregation, Father. Pray that you will bless them with good health and long and fruitful lives in their service to you with the wisdom and the knowledge that they need, Father, as they lead this congregation. And help us, Father, as members, that we will support them, we will encourage them, and that we will let them know that we back them and we love them, Father, and all that they do as they lead us in a way that we might all have a home of heaven in you and the afterlife. Father, we do realize we're human. We do sometimes stumble, we fall, Father, we ask for forgiveness when we do. We know that you've told us that you will forgive us if we will confess those faults, and we're thankful for them. We ask that you would continue to be with us, Father, as we lift up our voices and praise to you. All that we do this day will truly bring glory and honor into your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. My soul magnifies the Lord. Glory be to been mindful of his servant. He has been mindful of great things. He will be blessed forever, forever. I will be blessed by the Lord. 
God alone is mighty, mighty our God alone has done great things. God alone is worthy, worthy, holy is his name. The Jesus gave his life for ransom, God on Calvary, on Calvary, through old Calvary. Pray the Lord and God bless that we might get the right shining bell. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down. Oh, glory, praise the Lord. Salvation has been brought down.
turn our attention to reflecting on the memorial that honors what we've been singing about these last few songs, the victory and the salvation that we have because of his sacrifice. We'll sing this song and then we'll be led in some thoughts as we take the communion. Good morning. If anyone has need of the emblems still, we do have them in the back. And and also, if you want to raise your hand, we can have one brought to you. I think we're good. I think it would be fair to say that in our society in the U.S. that we're very concerned about justice and rights and things like that. If you Think about our nation in its infancy, we adopted the Bill of Rights. 
And the idea was that we would, the, the people would retain certain rights so that the government could not do certain things, things that we might consider to be injustices. And as we think about our society today, there are certainly injustices that occur, have occurred over time, and oftentimes we look to make those justices right, whether it's through our legal system or, or whatever it may be. We, we even look back throughout history to try and, after the fact, right certain wrongs that have been committed over time. And if we just think about ourselves individually, if someone wrongs us, if someone violates one of our rights, we often want that to be made right. We want to fix that. And so that idea, I think, is interesting when we think about our Lord, who was put through what we would say is certainly the most unjust situation of all time. Peter reflects in 1 Peter 3, verse 18, he says, For Christ also suffered for sins once for all time, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. A lot that we could talk about here, but if you think about what's said there, Christ suffered. Why? For our sin. Christ didn't sin himself. He suffered because of our sin. And so because of that, his death was the just for the unjust. The greatest act of injustice of all time. And when you think about that in comparison to how we might think or how people who have suffered for unjust reasons have thought throughout time, if you think about you know, whatever situation you've heard of, Usually someone who suffers unjustly does not want to suffer unjustly. If they had a choice in the matter, they would not have suffered unjustly. And if you asked someone who was wrongfully convicted and sat in prison for many years and finally was exonerated, if you asked them, would you go through it again? I suspect the answer would be no. But Christ was willing to suffer, and he did have a say in the matter. He could have called angels to his defense. He could have avoided the situation, but he was willing to suffer unjustly. Why? Because as Peter says, we are brought back to God. We are reconciled with God. That gulf that was created all the way back in Genesis in the Garden of Eden when man sinned, that gulf that's created because each of us sin and fall short of the glory of God, is made right because of this unjust sacrifice, this unjust death that the Christ was willing to suffer. And so let's reflect on that as we partake of this supper. Bow with me. Father, we thank you for this bread that represents your son's body. We're grateful that he was willing to be sacrificed once for all for our sins. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for this cup, which represents your son's blood, through which our sins are cleansed, and through which we are reconciled to you and have a hope of eternity with you and your son. And again, it's in his name we pray. Amen.
Before we sing this next song, I, I want to uh, read you the backstory of this song that we've been singing all year, if you'll just bear with me as I kind of read the story. It began a few days before Christmas in the year 2017, Joel and Janie Taylor, parents of a two-year-old son, uh, realized that their son, their two-year-old son, had become suddenly ill and had to go to the emergency room. Even though Jackson, the little boy's name, initially came home from that visit, his health, instead of getting better, quickly declined even faster. And he ended up being taken via helicopter to an intensive care unit. Turned out that the little boy had a rare blood disorder due to an E. coli infection and was in a battle for his life. Jackson's mom, Janie, had this to say around this time. I was just flooded with this sense that I might never know my boy growing up to be a man. That it might be this week that I lose my son. The next few weeks were obviously emotional ones. While the family thought Jackson had turned a corner towards recovery shortly after Christmas, the battle for his life continued. With the two-year-old vomiting blood and experiencing kidney failure, seizures, trouble with his respiratory system, and then in the middle of Jackson's struggle, the Taylors found out that their four-year-old daughter potentially had the same thing. Dad, Joel, had this to say. You know, there was just a, a time when you feel like you've said every prayer you can possibly say. You don't have the strength. You don't have the praise and worship anymore. You haven't slept for weeks. You're just kind of undone. And the flip side of that is I feel that was the moment I began to really feel the prayers of everyone. At one point during the ordeal, the Taylor's friends, David and Melissa, who wrote this song that we're about to sing, got word that it was unlikely that Jackson was going to make it through this thing. And so devastated by the news of this two-year-old little boy, David, and his wife both kind of said that they felt like there was a giant of unbelief that stood before them. But they also felt resilience in the face of that unbelief. And from that, this melody and this song that we're about to sing erupted out of his heart, and out of his mouth came some words to this song that we're about to sing, Raise a Hallelujah. He sent the song to Joel and Janie, the parents who listened to it repeatedly, and they played it to their son. And soon after the new year, Jackson finally started to improve without relapsing. Addie, the four-year-old, began to recover as well. You know, I, oftentimes we think of, of the power of, of singing and these songs that we sing uh, in a joyful occasion, a celebratory way, a, a time of worship, and don't always consider the truly healing power and power within words at the right time put inside of a song at even the worst of times. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 19 and 20 reads this way, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Listen to this. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Let's do exactly that as we raise a hallelujah together. What a powerful story that was. Just one piece of a wisdom towards the end of the song. Remember when we have the sing a little louders? Just make sure you watch me carefully for those that we come in at the, at the appropriate time. So I'll cue you when we have those. Well, let's go back to our worshipful spirit. I raise a Yeah. 
Well, here's we close. I'm going to read from 1 Peter chapter uh, 1, if you want to be turning there. And while you're turning there, uh, Greg and Scott, thank you guys both so much uh, for being with us. been super beneficial. Uh, I hope I speak on behalf of everyone, feeling some edification, feeling encouraged through this entire weekend. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. We're about to sing, uh, I think we got two songs left, and, and the one that uh, we're going to sing for our invitation song is Living Hope, and, and Peter's writing to this group of believers, encouraging them to, to keep their faith and to keep their hope and live with endurance through all these things that they got going on. And, and there's something in here for all of us, I think. Beginning there in verse 3, all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Because of that, now we live with great expectation and we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and of decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Verse 6, so be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for just a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious and inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Are you here this morning and, and you're ready to be born again to this living hope, to obtain this inheritance that will not change and will not decay? If you're here and you have not done that, I ask you, what are you waiting for? There is nothing better than these words right here. And after doing that, the hope that we have of marking your spot in heaven reserved is a place for you. I hope that if you're in that position and you need to come, that you will, as we sing these words, hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You, Jesus, have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, our living hope. If you need to respond to his invitation, won't you please come down to the front and let us know as we stand and as we sing. How great the chasm that
follow that. Um, thank you again, Scott and Greg, for being with us and traveling uh, so far and leading us. Uh, we've certainly benefited and God has certainly uh, been praised this weekend. Uh, we want to thank all of our visitors that are here this morning. Uh, if you have a, a visitor's card uh, and filled that out, you can place that in one of the boxes we have in the back. Uh, and also to our members, if you have not, uh, if you wish to contribute this morning to the work here and have not already done that, of course, you can uh, place that in the box as well or give through one of our uh, online options. Uh, one quick announcement, if you are participating, helping with VBS, I believe there's a short meeting immediately after services in A1 in the back, so please make your way down there uh, for that. Uh, we do have our 6 p.m. evening service uh, this evening. I believe Jeff Burnett's going to be uh, presenting a lesson to us, so please uh, join us here tonight if you're able. And uh, other than that, we hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Thank you. We'll have a closing song and then closing prayer. On behalf of Scott and I, thank you for having us here. It has been an honor and a joy and a privilege to have the best seat in the house. Uh, and to be trusted to lead you in your praise to God and your worship uh, to Him. So carry this with you. I know He and I will, and we will cherish these moments uh, for many days and months and I'm sure years to come. Let us close uh, with Days of Elijah, our last song together.
Will you bow your heads and pray with me, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to spend time with you this morning in song, in communion, and in prayer, all praising your name. We pray that as we go throughout our week that you will provide us opportunities to spread your word. And despite our presence here this morning, we are still in continual need of your grace, your guidance, your forgiveness. And the hope is that we will take today's theme of letting our voices, our joy, our glory rise up to the heavens, rise up to you, Lord. And we hope that we can spread it throughout our community. And like the songs today said, louder and louder, you're going to hear our praises roar. Hear them roar of truly how great thou art, and that you truly are the only living hope. We also pray for those not present here this morning, and especially for those who have fallen away from you, who have never been exposed to your name, your love, and the eternal happiness and salvation that only you can provide. As the school year winds down, we focus on our youth, that they will be safe in and out of the classroom, that they will make wise choices, and that they will conduct themselves in a manner that is pleasing to you, that they will bring your name, in your word into the classrooms and hallways of their schools. How wonderful it would be for some of those who have not been exposed to your word to hear your message and be led in your direction. And we offer a special prayer for our high school seniors who are entering an exciting but also a vulnerable time in their lives where they are often granted more freedom and are faced with new temptations. We pray that they will make good decisions, that they will stay the course with their faith, and that they are able to positively influence their peers, many of whom need to be led in your direction. We pray that these seniors, as, as well as the recent graduates of both high school and college, we pray that as they embark on this new chapter in their lives, that they will find success and happiness that they desire, but that they never forget the only way to true happiness to eternal happiness, to eternal salvation is through you. Lord, 
As always, we ask that you forgive us of our sins and help us to strive to glorify your name in all we do. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.